Hello there everyone. I'm Tina from Meinberg and happy to welcome you to our very first two minute Q&A with Daniel. Only a few weeks left until NAB in Las Vegas. This is the perfect opportunity to ask our expert a few questions about timing and synchronization in the media and broadcast industry. I'm happy to have our head of software development, Daniel Bolt, here with me today. And I will ask him some interesting questions on that special topic. Uh, so Daniel, tell me, what, what is the role of synchronization in the broadcast industry? Um, in a broadcast studio, for example, you have um, different sources for the content that forms to a program stream together that the customer will see at home. So, for example, um, you have uh, several cameras producing video content, you have uh, audio sources, and you have uh, additional data that comes into play. So that when all those sources come together, they have to be aligned um, so that uh, they actually match, so that the audio matches to the video, mm -hmm. or on the other hand, that the cameras, for example, know uh, where the line one starts at which point in time. So synchronization is a very important part of the um, uh, production facilities. Um, TV and radio has always been around us nearly for a century. Mm -hmm. So um, how did they do it before synchronization was actually a thing? Well, basically, synchronization was always uh, important um, for the production. Just the methods to achieve this were different or maybe simpler. For example, in the early days of TV production, uh, the, the producers used the frequency of the power grid to, uh, to do the timing for the equipment. And then quartz oscillators have been uh, invented and uh, later on those were then also, also timed uh, with the GPS uh, uh, system so that mm -hmm. even across um, um, remote uh, production facilities um, all of them had the same uh, timing. So synchronization was always important but the mm -hmm. methods to achieve this were different. Okay. okay. And uh, what would you say are the modern synchronization solutions used today uh, in the broadcast industry? Uh, when we're talking about standards, then we have, for example, the SEMTST 2110 standard uh, in a modern TV studio um, that takes care about uncompressed video, audio, mm -hmm. and of course the synchronization part. The synchronization um, uh, is defined in one of the substandards of the ST2110 standards suite, and it uh, mandates for the use of uh, the precision time protocol PTP. Um, in its flavor uh, 2059, the mm -hmm. profile that was defined by SEMTI for, um, for the studios. Okay, okay. And now in this, all, in this whole transition from SDI to IP, uh, what do you think, will, how will it be? Will there an IP-based revolution or uh, will we stick to, to the SDI analog solutions or w what is your opinion? Um, I would say the transition is already in place, in place since a couple of years. Um, we had uh, a lot of reference projects in the, also in the early days, nearly 10 years ago already, but uh, since a couple of years more and more uh, studios uh, are doing the transition from the SDI world to the IP mm -hmm. world and uh, from my opinion there is no way back, although there are uh, still some reasons to do um, smaller studios that do not have the intention to scale um, also with a uh, pure SDI approach but um, the majority of the modernizations and of um, newly built facilities will be based on um, IP only. Thank you Daniel for your time. Stay tuned for the next interview session with Daniel where we will ask him about how SDI and IP-based solutions can coexist in a media broadcast environment. Thank you for watching. See you next time. <laughs>